Joining me now, Molly Hemingway, senior editor for The Federalist. Molly, great to see you. Let, great let, to be here. Let's pick up with uh, Alan Dershowitz and his, uh, and his perspective on criminalization of political differences. I think he's got it exactly right. I don't think anyone, though, is going to constrain themselves or add proportion or discretion or judgment uh, to when they're going to go after uh, political opponents in, in, in the legal system. It's absolutely true, and he is right that this is a problem that affects both sides, but I don't think we've seen anything quite like what we've witnessed for the last, uh, the last year with President Trump. Absolutely. This is a refusal to just accept the reality of the election and to criminalize. I mean, what did, what did President Trump do that was so wrong? At the end of all of this investigation, at the end of all of, you know, we, we could not have more reporting on this. It looks like the crime that he committed was basically winning the election, and some people are not able to handle that and it's beyond time that they did yeah and, and it's sort of a it's sort of a mad uh, projection that we're watching here uh, is if, why should anyone care that they can't handle it uh, these are daffodils and determined political uh, operatives, uh, they're apparatchiks. They're, but, uh, but these the people left. are these people are actually in very high positions. It's not just oh. in not just in politics. It's in the media, and they are not being held to account for some of the truly crazy or irrational things they're saying, including that $150,000 in Facebook ads changed the election, even though those ads were placed in 2015 and didn't even mention political candidates. That is an unhinged thing to say, and nobody's actually calling them on that. Well, and the, and the rest of it, that the national left-wing nut media, I mean, whether you look, what do you think when you look at the Washington Post each morning? What do you think when you look at the New York Times? You couldn't, those are contrived constructed, orchestrated attacks on a sitting president that have no merit. He, the president well, calls it fake news. It is utterly manufactured, partisan, ideologically canted, uh, ignorant propaganda. You know, and particularly, I think, with the Washington Post, which has quietly changed the entire basis of at least three of their big Russia stories where they claim there's something really nefarious, and mm -hmm. it turns out later that it's that the entire premise of the story isn't even true, like Russia hacking the Vermont power grid or President Obama supposedly telling Facebook personally about Russia. It turns out President Obama never even mentioned the words Russia with Facebook. And even the way that story is treated, where a sitting president talked to a media company encouraging them to censor news, and that's treated as totally totally normal, but, you know, that's not the same standard that is applied to the, the subsequent president. Yeah, I, I mean, when the Washington Post and the New York Times have become the Carlos Slim blog in the case of the New York Times and the Jeff Bezos blog in the case of the Post, uh, what are other papers to look, you know, look toward? Uh, well, it, it is such ignorance on, on a massive scale pretending to be journalism? Are you kidding me? And, you know, to be clear, it is wonderful to have newspapers that hold politicians accountable. They need to do a very good job with that, though, and get their facts straight, not be easily misled by every unnamed source, and also not be so wildly erratic in when they care about scandal and when they don't. The Washington Post didn't They're care about erratic. the Obama They're admitted. committed leftists, and well, they are they committed anti-Trumpers, both, both institutions. Am I yeah, wrong? And they, they should have covered the Obama administration and its numerous scandals, and had they done so, they would be taken more seriously now. I think that was as political and politic and, uh, uh, should I say, objective a way in which to respond. Molly, <laughs> great to talk with you always. Thanks. Great being here. Thanks.